We are talking about how to find clarity in chaos today, which is hugely relevant right now from the micro to the macro, if you're talking about the pandemic, the U.S. election, relationship you have with someone or finances, a job, what have you. I'm sure there's a place in life in which we would like more clarity on how to move forward with something. So before Always. we get into talking about that and um, our own tips and techniques on finding more clarity, let's just quickly introduce ourselves. So um, I'll let you go first and then I'll introduce myself. Thanks. So I'm Tiffany. I'm coaching divorcees on thriving through divorce, which can definitely be chaotic. <laughs> and I'm in Southwest yeah. France, if, if I hadn't mentioned that before. Yeah. And you, Danielle. And I'm Danielle Sundberg, and I am a transformational coach and Reiki master. And so this is something that a lot of my clients are coming to me with right now and looking for is, where is my clarity and how do I get it back? (laughs) Or what does it even look like to have clarity? Because they're not, you can become so lost that you don't even resonate with what does it feel like to be clear on something? How will I know if I have clarity? And there's that confusion layer on top of it too. Yeah. And even if you had clarity before, it's now everything's changing from week to week. You have it. Yeah. Oh, you're just cutting out for one second. But yeah, it's it's not like you can just pause life and stop it and then get clarity. And we don't want to be in this state of constant reaction without being able to plan and create a vision and have that clarity. But even in this situation right now, as you mentioned, it's, it's very challenging. So how do you know if you have clarity around something? What does it feel like for you, Tiff? For, well, for me, um, the first sign definitely is that I'm not reacting or if I'm not at the affect of something, I actually have, the the inner calm but also the foresight to kind of see and and be sovereign over the planning and over what's coming so um that i don't feel like there's any situation that i i won't be able to handle but it's more than just like thinking of every detail ahead it's the i i have a strong sense of like inner knowing when i know something rings true it doesn't sound like it's going through a distorted um you know, speaker when it's coming to me, when it's coming through really clear and strong and straight. And I know that it's truth. That for me is, is clarity, which only gets confirmed externally through everything else that happens, but it usually does start internally for me. What about you? Yeah. I think that's, you know, hitting the nail on the head, that clarity comes from within us. And, um, you know, I have a quote I wanted to, I wrote it down because I wanted to say, it on here that nobody can give you wiser advice than yourself. And that is a quote from Cicero. Yeah. And I think that it's super relevant from the time of Cicero to today, because it remains true that fundamental human nature is that clarity lies within us. It's something internal. You can't go get it. You can't go shopping for it. You can't go get it through meditating or through yoga or through a walk in the woods. It's actually already in you. Mm. And the act of doing the yoga or the meditation is to calm the chaos, to allow that clarity to rise up. Right. That's a really, really well put. Actually. I think that um, cutting down all of the peripheral noise, it might be our biggest challenge right now, um, especially and understanding what noise is yours and what noise isn't. Um, and so I've turned into kind of like a mental minimalist where I've decided that I'm only going to take on like two or three big topics at a time because other, I, I know beyond that, I'm not going to have clarity just from sheer volume, much less everything else that's going on. So like, I can create my own noise by endlessly researching or diving into like deep topics that I'm interested in. You know, when you get on the web and you're like, Oh my gosh, this rabbit hole goes so deep. No, (laughs) I have to like refrain and go, okay, yes, I'm going to deep study like on two things and everything other than that, I'm actually creating noise for myself. But of course we have, you know, all the external noise that we're dealing with on top of that. So how can you tell if something is, your own issue that you're needing clarity on or if it's someone else's 
chaos? That That's a really good question because I think trying to figure out which monkeys are yours and which monkeys are part of someone else's circus or figuring out how to stay in your lane is really challenging right now because we have a media and we have access to information that gives us the impression that everything's in our lane, that we have to take care of everything and we have to know about everything. We have to be involved and especially like the latest news, we don't know what could happen. When you take a step back, you realize that you actually have very little to do with the situation or very much influence that you can actually have on the situation. And it's really, they're vying for your attention in that way. So um, it, it's, it's easy to say, oh, I don't want to, you know, get in that person's business or get in that person's drama or, you know, take their stress upon me or, you know, like what they're saying doesn't apply to me. I don't have to take it personally. But when you're kind of going on with this international narrative of all this stuff is going on and we need to know about it, um, I would say, you know, I'm, um, I've gotten into the, the videos of Daniel Schmachtenberger where he's saying, you know, you, you don't have to be a specialist in everything. And if you're pretending to be a specialist in everything, you're lying to yourself. So just pick one thing and really care about it and really make a difference in it. Pick the one thing that you're supposed to birth and bring into the world and actually be a specialist in that thing and, and kind of let the rest go and say, like, it's okay to not know. Say, I don't know. How, how do you deal with that? Um, with with everything that's going on with all the noise and in, in your internal and external noise. You know, what you're saying reminds me of, of people who are like, I'm just not watching the news anymore. I don't check my phone. I don't listen. I don't watch. I just can't handle it because that's, they know that that's the external noise that's pushing on them and causing stress, overwhelm, chaos, feelings of, of feeling stuck because you don't have control over what's going on with the pandemic and all the fear. And right. so people just cut it out, right? That's one way to just cut it. Like if you can cut it out by just not looking at your device and not turning on the news, that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing is it's, it's, something that we say a lot in, I think, in our line of work, because it applies to everything, which is um, being present, right? If you mm. are caught up in the fear of the chaos of whatever the thing is, let's just say the pandemic. Well, you're already in the future. Your mind is out there thinking about what's going to happen down the line, True. what your life is going to look like, what's going to happen to your job, what's going to happen to your family, your house, all of these things. But in the actual moment, you're probably just sitting on your couch uh, and maybe you're eating dinner or, you know, like you're watching TV, like nothing is actually stress inducing about sitting on your couch. Yeah. So coming back to the present moment, is a great way to calm the chaos. It's a lot of times tricky to do that because our minds are so good at being in prediction mode and they want to go mm -hmm. there. They want to wander. So it takes a real amount of conscious willpower to bring it back into the present moment. And the one thing that I'll add that you brought up um, that I, I love saying is when we feel like we're in a place of confusion or frustration, a kind of like, I don't know what decision to make next. I have no clarity. The truth is that you do. And you have the clarity to know that you're confused. And that <laughs> sounds really counterintuitive, but it's true. Mm. And that's your inner wisdom rising up to say, hey, you got a lot of mental noise circling around you, around whatever yeah. topic. You got to go calm it down. And that's the way that it can come through in that moment. And so just knowing that is available to you all the time. It's even coming through when you feel confused to show you the self-awareness of your own mental and emotional state. Right. Oh, like how much space does that already give you to say, okay, my clarity hasn't left me. It's still here. Isn't that amazing how just the reminder that you know and trusting yourself to know can just 
already brings so much clarity. It's, it's so mm-hmm. funny how, you know, we just need that reminder or almost that permission just to be like, okay, you can trust yourself. You know exactly what is noise and what you need to pay attention to. But to take what you said to like the, the most extreme situation in my life, in my divorce where I was super in the past, like, oh, what happened and this happened and that happened and this, you know, awful thing. And then I was super in the future of like the horror of what might happen and what if this happens, what if that happens, trying to kind of almost chess strategize every single move that could possibly be made. And that was when uh, just that moment I got really into the teachings of Eckhart Tolle about being in that moment. And just the realization was shocking to me of how if I just stopped, I was actually quite happy. Like, I was eating well. I was super healthy. I had a beautiful, like, countryside. I, like, you know, didn't have any actual stress in my life at that moment. I was having nice times with my family. And I I had not even realized how happy I was because I was so busy being unhappy about whatever was going on. Yeah. And and so was there something that, you know, sparked that awareness that you, if you just came back to the present moment, everything calmed down? Like what made you stop swirling around in your head? Uh, That's a good question because I I think I mentally put that on myself while I was going through the teachings of Tolle, just having to remind myself regularly, especially when I was spinning. And I, as you said, like you realize, you realize that you're in this spin and you want to stop the spin and you, you notice how to make it stop by just actually being in the moment and, and paying attention to what is truly really happening. But uh, I now to this day, every time I'm in nature, I kind of, you know, you, you have to stop because you have to admire the beauty and you're like, wow, nature is just fine and abundant and happy and I'm in it. Yeah, nature is a great way to come back into the present moment. And what you're saying, I think, is, is exactly right, that once you know that it works, mm-hmm. whenever you catch yourself in the spin, is it great? Yeah. You caught yourself. There's no, like, better time or worse time. Whenever you catch yourself is the best moment to then take the space <laughs> and go take a walk in nature, right? And mm-hmm. And actually... Something that I, I've read that I haven't tried yet, but I think is a great technique for proactively finding clarity without getting into the spin first and then having to notice it and then stop yourself is yeah. to actually go into your calendar and block off an hour or a half an hour somewhere in your day and call it your worry hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that will actually mentally compartmentalize wow. when you're going to spin. Yeah. And then at least, you know, outside of that hour, because you know that you've, you've shelved it, that you have it available to you. You're, you're not just trying to suppress it down. Because if you keep suppressing it, it will keep bobbing back up again. It's like a cork in the, in the ocean, the worries. They keep coming yeah. up. But if you say, okay, I have a time for you. I see it on my calendar. It's at 3 p.m. So from (laughs) now till three, I'm going to focus on blah, blah, blah. Then you can actually focus on blah, blah, blah. That's amazing because I I bet with time, like if you were to do that regularly, it would just keep getting shorter and shorter the amount of time that you would need to let yourself spin. I wonder if you like it, it, it. Yeah. I wonder if it would just kind of self, you know, like you'd run out of, things to spin about. Well, one of the problems that we encounter a lot with lack of clarity is a sense of um, distraction, that we distract ourselves from what we actually want to be doing because of whatever the worry is that keeps coming up in our minds and distracts us. And so to compartmentalize Mm. some time, you get rid of one of the major issues that keep us from our clarity. Yeah, that makes sense. We do self-distract a lot. And, um, you know, one thing that I was thinking about is kind of 
we, we have to build these tools into our lifestyle, no matter what is changing or what's going on into the world, because there, there is no order and there is no chaos and there's always order and there's always chaos because we have this constant flow of life. And I think that, you know, the safety, perhaps some safeties that we thought we had before have been revealed to us that they, you know, we didn't have those safeties and we were counting on certain safeties or we count on things to be a certain way. And we have to like be okay with just what is, however it comes completely accept what is and, and, you know, not be in reaction, but, but build flow in, to our lifestyles so that like whatever happens, we can just ride the tide of it. That is so true. And, um, you know, it, it leads to really what the source of chaos is, which is what we've been talking about, which is our minds. It's not actually the thing itself. It's not the pandemic. It's not your divorce. It's not your relationship or your job or whatever that's causing you stress. It's your thoughts about mm-hmm. the thing that are causing you to feel stressed out and chaotic. So, yeah. it, so just giving yourself the accountability that it's you and your thoughts and not the thing itself is a little hard sometimes because we want it to be something outside of ourselves that's doing it to us but it isn't. But what that also means is it's really empowering because it's in our power completely to control the chaos that we feel. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways, actually my favorite way right now that um, actually comes from Dr. Sri Kumar Rao, who is this incredible professor who has a wonderful course in personal mastery that he's taken across the entire U S and in business schools to teach and the technique he calls it um, good thing bad thing who knows and it basically comes from this really ancient some people think it's a Sufi story some people think it's a Tao story you know it's one of those ancient wisdom stories and it's about this old man have you heard this story before perhaps yeah maybe with a son and a horse yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a really good one. I love this one. So, <laughs> there's an old man who wants to gain some wealth. He's dirt poor. And so he borrows a huge sum of money from his neighbors. And he says, I'm going to go buy a horse and I'm going to breed horses. And they're like, okay, here's some money. Go buy a horse. He buys his horse. He brings it home. He puts it in the pen. And about a week later, the horse flees the pen. It disappears and the neighbors come out and they say to the old man you owe us money so how are you going to pay us back and the man shrugs his shoulders and he says good thing bad thing who knows and the neighbors are like no it's a bad thing because you need to pay us and he's like good thing bad thing who knows a couple weeks later the horse comes back and it had been out uh, gallivanting with a pack of wild stallions and it got in with these stallions they became friendly and they brought all these horses back with him to the pen and now all of a sudden this man has a pack of horses and then the neighbors come out and they're like wow you're the wealthiest man in the whole village now and the man shrugs his shoulders he says good thing bad thing who knows then the, his son is out riding the horses one day And he falls off and he gets trampled on and breaks both his legs. And the man says, good thing, bad thing, who knows? And then a week later, the king comes to the village to uh, bring all the sons of all the families into his army for a war he's waging. And he lets the son uh, stay with the father because both his legs are broken. Good thing, bad thing, who knows? So the story continues like this. And you know, the point of the story is that when something happens, we want to judge it as a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. And then if we judge it a certain way, it causes us to have an emotional reaction. And if we judge it as a bad yeah. thing, we get stressed. But if we judge it as a good thing, then we feel, you know, like success or happy and whatever. And then something else happens. And then we decide we can look back at, back at it later and reassess how we feel about it. And we can do that our whole life. 
So it's never necessary to judge something because how you judge it changes with time and perspective and whatever happens next. Mm. Right. So simply just asking this question about, oh, I think this is a bad thing, but could it possibly not be a bad thing? Changes your mental state from a place of despair and chaos and stress to hopefulness. And just doing that little question and asking that can just shift you just enough to save yourself from going down that rabbit hole of spinning. And then you can ask yourself, you know, what could I do now that I'm in this place of hopefulness to make this thing not be a bad thing? And now you're in a place of empowered action. Okay. So these so, are just simple yeah. questions. Yeah. You're taking essentially the whatever situation is coming your way and you're using the perspective to make the best out of it, turn it into a good thing, or perhaps um, dampen whatever negative thoughts or, or pain that you might be creating around it. Yeah. And I mean, it's to your point of what you were saying before of just moving with the flow of life and accepting what is, you know, it's our resistance to our expectation that isn't met that causes yeah. us to feel stress. If we have a job that we're fired from, we don't expect that we're going to get fired. Then we have a reaction to it, that it's a bad thing. But if we can just go with the flow and say, maybe not, maybe something is coming down the pike that is now going to be available to me that wouldn't otherwise have been if I had been in this job, then you release a little bit of that resistance and it becomes less of a bad thing. Yeah. And how many times have we seen that happen over and over where people think that they've lost something and it actually was just making space for the even better thing that was coming next? I know I, I see that as like a very frequent pattern in life and people get so distraught because they can't see into the future. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah. With your divorce, I'm sure. You know, well, yeah, that was, that was a huge one. And there's been so many since then, like so many really great things that have, you know, come in every time I'm willing to let go of something that I was holding on to. You know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of people who live in resistance to like something new or something uh, changing. And I, I'm, I allow things to change very quickly, but sometimes I like, you know, like, I feel like I want to hold on to certain things as well. Um, and that's, that's the one that gets me is like holding on to things that I really care about or that I, you know, I don't want to leave my realm. Mm -hmm. So, but sometimes we do have to, you know, things go and things come. And if we don't let them go, the other things don't come. So that is exactly right. And, and we forget how resilient we are too, to cope yeah. and thrive with change. And when we feel resonant with our own inner resilience and our own inner wisdom and can just trust that if we flow with life, it will come up for us when we need it and we will thrive, and we will cope, then we don't have as much resistance to the thing. And we can move through it with more clarity on the decisions we actually need to make to move forward. That's something that I haven't actually heard in relationship to what we're dealing with globally is a really good point and a really hopeful point about how resilient we really are as as human beings as being highly adaptable highly intelligent um you know community minded uh beings that we we do have an amazing power to shift and adapt and thrive we always have historically so yeah yeah. I mean, if you look at a baby, right, it, like looking at a baby is the perfect way to understand what our human nature is because babies haven't developed that rational thinking mind yet. So everything that a baby does is just innate intelligence. And you see a baby learn to crawl and walk and fall down and get back up again. And, mm -hmm. you know, they cry and then they move on. And, 
you just see how they're curious and they explore and they um, and they're resilient and they just keep bouncing back from all the times that they fall down and, and like you know so true. Um, like yeah. I was just playing with my daughter this morning and she took a real good knock on the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like she got she gets back up and she she tried again. And um no one taught her to do that. No one said you need to do this again because you need to learn to walk. It's really important that you get the skill down. And she's like, "Okay, mom, got it." <sighs> no, she just wants to. She's just motivated and and yeah. so that is fundamentally who we are underneath our chaotic minds. And so trusting that that's there to guide us forward is really all you need. It's that simple. So beautiful. Yeah, I love that way of looking at it. Actually, you know, we're just we're just babies wanting to grow and explore and discover. And uh, yeah, and we'll take a knock to the head a few times, but no, no worries. We get we keep going. <laughs> Yeah, keep yeah. going. <laughs> I love are there, that. Are there any other last techniques or tips that you want to add before we go? Um, let me think. If I had anything in my no, I I think that was really key. But if you know, we were just gonna like sum it up. I would say, you know cut out the noise and the confusion, cut out the noise that isn't your, you know, your basic foundational necessity noise and um, go back to spirit. As you said, what you already know inside and just be really be present with that and trusting and accepting um, of what is, you know, that's it. Sometimes it's hard to accept that what is happening is what should be happening. We like to say something, something else should be happening, but no, this, it should be happening because it is happening. So, <laughs> so being, being present and accepting that, um, I think that gets us really a, a long way. And, you know, surprisingly, we can find clarity in the chaos. What, what's your, um, I... what's your takeaway? What's your, what's your sum up of this? Yeah. Um, I think that was a great sum up. The only thing I would add is um, asking yourself what you are confused about sometimes is really helpful. If mm. you are feeling a general sense of chaos and overwhelm, because right now the planet's pretty intense. Yeah. And saying, okay, well, what is it that I'm actually feeling confused about what do I need clarity on well first of all just asking that question you might find the clarity that you're looking for by giving focused attention to it and second you might realize that you're just absorbing the energy of you know the news and like you're talking about the outside noise and it's just general overwhelm and it doesn't belong to you and once you realize that just exhale, let it go, go for a walk in nature, do your yoga, whatever, and come mm -hmm. back to how you really feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, exactly. just asking that simple question to yourself um, mm -hmm. has definitely been helpful for me. So there's a lot of good tips and techniques in this little conversation. This is super packed full of awesome stuff. So I'm really glad that we got to have this chat. Yes, I hope that these techniques will be easily applicable for people. And since we have lots of different people, you should find one to your to your need or to your flavoring and, and follow follow that rabbit trail to your um, to your clarity. So um, we'd love to have your your feedback or your comments um, to know if this was helpful to you, if you have any other questions. Um, or if there's perhaps like another topic that you think would be salient and helpful, because we like to have these um, conversations, definitely these inter yeah, intercontinental know. connections. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Tiff. This is so great. And yes, I hope everyone enjoyed. You. And we'll talk again soon. Thanks for hosting. Big kiss. <laughs>